Welcome back to The Big Picture. We continue our special presentation from the groundbreaking of the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute with Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown. Good morning, everyone. It's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be here today. The groundbreaking of the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute is another day of great progress in the city of Buffalo. I want to congratulate the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute for your great work. I want to recognize Kaz Rodriguez and uh, the board of directors for doing an amazing job in bringing us to this day. And I want to say a, a special word about Kaz Rodriguez. He is a leader that leads with love and great compassion. And like so many of my colleagues in government, I have heard from Kaz often <laughs> on this project. But you know what? I enjoy hearing from Kaz. And I tell him that I enjoy hearing from him. And so on a Monday, the phone will ring and the staff will say, it's Kaz Rodriguez on the line for you. Put him right through. On Wednesday, the phone will ring. Kaz Rodriguez on the line for you. Put him right through. Kaz, your parents, you mentioned them. They would be so proud of you today. And that spirit, um, uh, that hardworking spirit that they instilled in you is certainly evident. The other thing about Kaz's leadership is that he draws people in and he works to develop the leaders of tomorrow. The Elsmeralda Sierras, the Donora Santoses, uh, the Kelly Hernandezes, and so many others that are on the board of the Hispanic Heritage Council. Our entire community, Kaz, uh, benefits from your leadership. Let's give him another round of applause. Tell us what this means to the Hispanic American community here in Buffalo. Just here to support the Hispanic Heritage Council and the building of the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute. This great community organization has done a tremendous job. This will be a major asset to the west side of Buffalo and to the city in general. And as mayor, just very proud to be here for another great day in the city. Another accomplishment that you can keep in your resume. Well, it's an accomplishment that the entire community can keep in their resume. Uh, this is certainly something that the community has come together on. I'm glad that my administration, working with the city council, was able to provide a million dollars to this project. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Even the governor of New York State, Kathy Hochul, was on hand to share her hometown connection with CAS and her support for the Institute. This is a testament to the resilient spirit of a group of committed individuals who set out to change the world. And indeed, it is always a small group that starts out with that idea, that kernel of belief that something better can happen. Kaz Rodriguez, what you did in creating the Hispanic Heritage Council, and I praise all the members who've been working so hard in the trenches at a time when people probably didn't believe this could happen. But you never gave up faith. You followed the courage of your convictions, and you made us all so proud. This is a proud community. It's a community I know very well. And in fact, you mentioned Lackawanna. Yesterday, late in the day, I was as far away from this place as you can get in our state, out in Long Island, New York, preparing for the hurricanes, okay, talking to our National Guard, making sure they're ready to anticipate the flooding damage that we think could happen imminently. But I said, that hurricane's got to wait because I'm getting back home because I am not going to tell Kaz I got stuck on Long Island <laughs> and did not make this event. So I came back. When I arrived, I haven't been home in a little while, I saw my husband after dinner that he made. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Wegmans, actually, for making dinner. 
He says, how about an ice cream cone? <laughs> Never say no to ice cream. Where do we go? Fran Seals. Fran Seals. So as we drove down Ridge Road last night in search of the perfect ice cream, a place my parents used to go and they lived in the trailer park behind it, we drove past the little church that had been the gathering place of the Puerto Rican community when I was a child. And I pointed out that building literally last night to Bill and I said, that's the place where my parents, who just had emerged from a trailer park, had a small home in Hamburg, had the beginnings of six of our kids, decide they're going to team up with this social activist priest and do something for the children of the migrant farm workers, the Puerto Rican children, who had no activities in the summertime when their parents were out in the fields out in Eden, or perhaps parents working at the steel plant. So my parents, with big family, their own struggles, we used to get our clothes at the used clothing stores. We didn't have a lot, but they always told us there's people of less. There's always someone who has less. And that's the spirit of giving that I was raised in. And my mother, very pregnant with I think number five or six, <laughs> load us all up in a beat up station wagon and say she's gonna start a summer camp for those children who need help in Lackawanna. So I was sixth grade. She put me in charge of the kindergarten class. <laughs> <laughs> my sister who was in first grade was my assistant. <laughs> I hope those kids are okay. <laughs> but I had to learn language. We taught them music and dance in this really rundown basement. My mother was going around to local floors, scraping, saying, are there any little parts of floral arrangements that we could bring with us so the kids could like glue something on a piece of paper and make it look pretty? She brought in volunteers from St. Peter Paul Church to help teach singing and dance. And we spent our summers like that made a little difference, I suppose. But it seared in me the knowledge of just how a few people with a vision to better the lives of others can realize that dream. That is what you did, Kaz. That's why we're here. That's why we're here to demonstrate this is a community that matters. Matters. It has been overlooked, taken for granted for far too long. And as the Puerto Rican community gravitated to the west side of Buffalo, other countries, others, not Puerto Rico is part of our country, I don't mean other countries, Puerto Rico is America, but other countries followed. And we became the melting pot of the world. I'm so proud of that. People have always felt welcome. They didn't know the same language, but we know the next generation will. And when they're educating our great public schools, they're going to get those good paying jobs. That is the American dream right outside these doors. That's what I love about this community. I've seen that, that transformation from being one identity to many, multicultural, so diverse, so fascinating. And that's what we're here to celebrate, a gathering place for people from many different backgrounds who want to learn about the great contributions of the Hispanic community, but also not just learn about the past, but celebrate with theater and dance and, and broadcasting to the world the stories of what people are doing. So your grandson will know the proud story of the struggles, but have an eye toward the future and know that it'll be better because of those who came before and built a place to celebrate this great story. This neighborhood has been transformed. It is much safer. I will give credit to someone as well who was the United States attorney, my husband. When he took down the gangs that were terrorizing the neighborhoods, people began to come out. We rode our bikes through here. We still do. Up and down these streets at a time when before people had been too afraid to come out of their houses because of the shooting in the streets. I see baby carriages being pushed. I see people from all over the world celebrating different food and talking to each other. This is America right here. This is the nation, the melting pot that has always been so welcoming to others. And I thank you and the members of the Heritage Council, Hispanic Heritage Council, not just for this building, but what you're doing right here, right now, by making those in search of the American dream feel welcome right here. There's a place for you, 
and we look forward to making sure that you will join us in living your dreams because we are all better for it. Congratulations. How does it feel to see this finally coming to, to fruition, to reality? Well, you were able to witness uh, the community coming together, government, private, public sector, the media, and we appreciate you being here. This is a big milestone for our community where we're building the future for our community so that we'll be able to preserve the arts, the culture, and preserve our history. And also, the effect that it's going to have on this whole geographic area here on the west side is just monumental. I've always said that uh, this Niagara Street Corridor, which is the Hispanic Heritage District, uh, we, we sit on prime land. It's a gateway to America, and we're very proud of that, that the Hispanic community is part of that welcoming point for many visitors from Canada and all over the world. And it's amazing how all of the legislature, the Albany, everybody local, how everybody got behind this project thanks to your persistence. Well, and we're very grateful. Grateful to government, private public sector, and all the donors, foundations, the corporations, all the businesses that have gotten behind this project to be able to build a crown jewel for not only our community, but for City of Buffalo and Western New York. It's first of its kind, and we want to be the model just not only for the state, but for the nation. And we will be, and thanks to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We wish Casimiro Rodriguez and his team good luck as their journey continues to see this project through. If you'd like to help, go to this website, hispanicheritagewny.org. I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. Thank you for watching The Big Picture. WBBZ-TV is proud to support the Hispanic community of Western New York.